Perfect. Right. So, welcome traders. Um, so, this is the podcast of Over the Shoulder. Uh, my name is Alex, and here today with me is... Michael. I'm Michael <laughs> Katz. Uh, hey, Alex. How's it going? Yeah, fantastic. First time, right? First, uh, the first episode. So, I'm going to pick uh, Mickey's brain a little bit. Mickey's a trader of 15 years, and you know, I'm getting there. I've been trading for about five years. Nice. So, I'm going to pick your brain for a lot of stuff. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. That's so great to pick. So that this this is kind of a selfish kind of topic because it's something that I would like as well. But uh, tell us a little bit about your your first year of uh, actually trading full time. Right. So I guess that this is something that you're saying selfish. I guess yeah. most traders really want to know. I wanted to know when I first started, you know, how to to first. Uh, do the first steps and all of that. Yeah. So the first year was uh, the first uh, year was obviously kind of rough. Mm-hmm. I started uh, okay because I learned before that. Before I started trading, I actually learned a lot uh, about almost two years. Okay. You know, so I knew that trading is hard. I knew that I need to be mentally strong, stuff like that, and also uh, manage my risk. Mm-hmm. I actually lost. Um, Roughly two thousand dollars at my first uh, six month, mm-hmm. so that's pretty decent. Okay, right. Yeah, it's two thousand dollars for a lot of people. That's like blowing their whole account. So yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most most people actually blowing their accounts at the beginning of the trading, um, you know, career. Mm-hmm. But actually, I, I did okay, just losing two thousand, mm-hmm. and from that point, I started building, you know. A little bit more of my uh, strategies. I used to sit like for hours, hours, all day long, basically on mm-hmm. that. So uh, my eyes got, um, you know, started to find uh, specific patterns, mm-hmm. and um, obviously started to working on my risk management. I actually took a one-on-one uh, session with one of the biggest uh, traders that we had here in Israel. So yeah, yeah. and so. Before you actually went full time, you were you were playing with the markets, and then obviously yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, I had a job. Okay. I I quit my job, and mm-hmm. uh, so I can have more time to trade. To trade. And I started working, you know, like um simple um, part time stuff. Yeah, part time, uh, waitressing mm-hmm. and bartending and all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, waitressing early in the morning, mm-hmm. then coming back to the computer because we uh, we have uh, our trade in the stock in the stock market starts in Israel. It starts at uh, four thirty p.m. Mm-hmm. So I worked until two. Yeah, back uh, home. Back home. Pre market. Yeah, trading all the way to twelve and uh, twelve a.m. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, that was my routine for at least two years. So, how big was your account when you first? Started then because you need a a lot of security just to say okay now I'm gonna quit my my full time job I'm gonna go half time and I'm gonna get like a, a job on the side right how how big was your account and when did you feel like comfortable that that's what you were going to do I mean th- uh, that was only ten thousand dollars so mm-hmm. that was a, a good uh, start mm-hmm. most traders start uh, in the equity market most okay. traders start uh, like with three thousand or five thousand so I. I had a nice uh, cushion to work with, mm-hmm. um, and other than that, I quitted my job, worked uh, in the mornings, yeah. um, and let's say after probably a full year, yeah. I started working only on the the weekend, okay. weekends. So yeah, yeah so I, I made my money the, mm-hmm. at least what I need for uh, in the weekends. Again, it's waitressing and stuff like that, so the the money is good. Yeah, here in Israel, yeah, yeah, in Israel Israel at least. (laughs) So, um, yeah, and then you got free time to trade, basically. And that's when you had that that loss, though. So, let's say I'm a trader, I've got ten thousand dollars, and now I want to trade full time. But then you had that that big loss. Did that actually affect you? Mentally, let's say if I go in now and I have a, one of those big losses and I lose, let's say, like nearly a quarter of my account. What do you mean what the do you, big loss? It's a two uh, two thousand. Yeah, the two thousand. It was all along the, the ah, six before, months. Yeah. yeah, the first six months. Mm-hmm. So just because um, they didn't, most traders, most people that are not yet traders, they mm-hmm. want to um, you know make the big bucks, right? They yeah. um, they see a YouTube channel channel showing them uh, Lamborghini and Ferraris. <laughs> Can't make a living out of trading and all of that BS, 
And at the end, since I, I learned a lot before, then I knew that I need to only risk like $20 a trade, $30 mm -hmm. a trade, $10 a trade, just to learn, you know, just to yeah. build up my uh, learning curve. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, before you, you would kind of suggest to somebody before you're thinking about taking it full time right. is to really take your time, let's say six months, just to really like hone down on your kind of edge definitely, and your kind of skill. Definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. that, you know, any, any prof uh, professional, um, right, uh, any professional that you'll take or a profession that you'll take, you have the learning curve, you have the time that you're spending learning what is it about. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so definitely first six months, even a, year, a full year, give yourself that time just to understand the process, understand the, the profession, mm -hmm. uh, risk less, don't look at the, um, you know, how much I can gain, um, what is my profits. Just um, start by, you know, building up mm -hmm. a nice plan, understanding the risk management that mm -hmm. you want to apply, uh, the strategies, what type of trader are you? You know, mm -hmm. let's say, for example, now that you're trading uh, for a few years, mm -hmm. at your beginning, mm -hmm. how was it? So my beginning, I started, it was actually in a, in a big bull run of crypto when I first started. So. You know, you could you could literally throw a dart at a at a chart and, and it goes up. You yeah. know, so right. I, you know I thought I was like the the biggest genius in the in the world, and I was naturally just adding as I went as I went along because obviously you're seeing the chart go up, you're you're making more money, so you're you're buying more, and obviously it came to a point, then obviously it went down to the totally the opposite direction. Um, Murphy, but. After that, it was like first it was I would class as a swing trader because I was you know leaving it for a long time, um, but then I was looking on scalping. I was just trying to really find out my personality. Now I'm trying to find the the medium in, bet in between that. So I'm still in that learning curve where I like taking like short trades, but you know if I see the opportunity to let something swing for for a good couple of days, five or six days, I'll take that. But I asked all of these questions because, you know, soon, as much as I love working, you know, as soon mm -hmm. I, I need the time to actually be trading and I've, I've got that, that money saved away, but it's getting the kind of, you know, the arm, the, the balls to, to just literally say, okay, now I'm going to, now I'm going to take that full time and I'm going to go for it. But how was your, that first year, let's say the first day that you went, you quit your job and then you said, okay, I'm now uh, a full time trader. What was that like? What was your routine? Did you have the routine sh before you planned what you were going to do for the rest of the week, or yeah, yeah, how did yeah. you go about De that before definitely. you actually gave in your like your notice for work? Yeah, definitely. I, I planted everything I had basically. I mm -hmm. knew how many hours I need to, you know, to put in to that um, uh, profession. I knew what I need to uh, build as a risk management. What type of trader am I? I knew mm -hmm. from day one that I'm going to be a day trader. You know, 95 percent of the of my 15 years I was a day trader. Mm -hmm. You can literally, um, I don't know, cover with uh, 30, maybe 50 trades that I took that are mm -hmm. not day trading, like uh, okay. classic day trading. Mm -hmm. um, on stocks at least, uh, futures uh, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, as soon as you prepare yourself, I actually covered that also in the um, webinar. If you guys didn't mm. see the um, uh, trading for a living webinar, yep. so uh, some of the stuff uh, also covered there. If you can prepare, if you know what you need to be uh, doing mm -hmm. all the, for the first three months, the six months, and so on, then it will be much easier mentally mm -hmm. to stick. Uh, in this game, you know, and because um, obviously you won't make a profit at the, your first, uh, I don't know, two months, three months, six months. Uh, it will take time because mm -hmm. everything takes time. Yep. You know, a cucumber takes at least uh, three months to grow. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, Mickey likes growing stuff in his garden, you know, so he's uh, that's, always that's bringing that. Not just a trader, but you also uh, grow stuff in Yeah, it's, my, it's actually my balance in life. Yeah. Uh, because one end I'm keeping in touch with nature mm -hmm. and from the other end I'm making money from the most corrupted <laughs> place on earth. So, yeah. One way of looking at it. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, so the first year, just prepare yourself before you uh, 
you start, right? Okay. If you will be mentally prepared, if you'll talk with, uh, if you have a wife or a girlfriend or whatever, and you say, okay, this, this is the chunk that I'm taking for becoming a profitable trader. This is the amount of uh, time. This is, the, um, this is my investment, right? Because you need to open an account or a funded um, uh, company account, right? Mm -hmm and pay a, a fee or just open your own account. Mm -hmm. You need computer, you need screens, mm -hmm. uh, the internet, whatever you need in order to understand that you're getting into a process that will take X amount of time and uh, money. And if you're doing that before you jump mm -hmm. in, you will be much stronger and... Uh, so you, do you yeah. think you have to be then profitable before you take that leap or you can take that leap and then work on the profitability um, before, because you know, I, I, one of my biggest losses, I can say I'm, I'm getting better as a trader, mm. but I'm still, I still haven't got back that, that big loss that I actually made. So let's say there's people in my position as well, still not profitable. But would you take that that leap before you get to that point, or only after you started seeing some good returns on, on your trading? That's a great question. So first thing, forget about what you lost. Forget about it. Not coming back. Don't oh, you, even you know. <laughs> remember, I, I lost. The, I had a big loss uh, yeah. last year. Forget about it. It's not. It's not there. Mm -hmm. So just this is the point that you're in right now. Doesn't matter what happened in the past. It's mm -hmm. super important mentally to uh, to be in that state of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is uh, basically, you know. I took uh, in the webinar, I spoke about a restaurant, building a restaurant. Yeah. So if you can't really become profitable when owning a restaurant mm -hmm. before you open the restaurant. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So go ahead, open the restaurant. If you plan that uh, before and you know how, many, how much money and time you have for that, go ahead and start the process. Mm -hmm. Learn through that process. Build the restaurant. Bring clients, mm -hmm. you know. And let's say a restaurant takes uh, probably three years to become, uh, to go to break even. Mm. So it's okay for you to start and build from there, but you gotta start and not wait to, to be profitable on demo, for example, and <laughs> then decide, okay. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a big problem is when you got a full-time job and you can only look at the charts in a specific time, you know, okay, you wake up, most people, they go to the gym and then they look at the charts for like 10 minutes, do their technical analysis and then go to work and, you know, there's only so much you can actually learn, but when you're in front of it, I guess, when you're all the time, it's gonna boost your learning curve astronomically. I mean, a doctor, when you go to operate, you know, mm -hmm. if he's burning ears and, um, you know, hours, every surgeon, every, you know, operating, uh, Things that he does, mm -hmm. just boosting up his learning curve until he become profession, professional. Nice. You know, so, uh, what would the at the start, or can you think of any like hard parts of, about taking it full time that maybe when you look look back you would have kind of changed or something that that mm -hmm. you'd have done a little bit differently? Um, for let's say the novice person that's going to do this, maybe something that they can learn not to do. So, yeah, that, that's a good one. Mm. I kind of like the way that I did, mm -hmm. but if, if I have one point that really, you know, pinching me sometimes, it's that I wasn't that aggressive as I should have been, you know, because mm -hmm. as a, tr at the moment, at least looking back, right, mm -hmm. um, I know how to trade, I prepared myself mm -hmm. quite good. Um, you know, I know that I know how to do that, mm -hmm. and it took me a while to um, not to understand that, to believe in that, to mm -hmm. believe in that. To have right? a kind of confidence yeah. to start putting on. Yeah, and then, again, you see that you you know you know what you're doing. You analyze the market, you see that it's working, right? You take the trades, you see that they are working as well. But it takes time to build that confidence to really push yourself. Uh, to become a little bit more aggressive and make basically make more money, mm -hmm. uh, and it took me a while to do that. So, maybe it's you know. how did when did you get to that point? Did you have to get to that point? Did you rely on obviously your stats? Did you have like a journal, and that's when you looked at that and said, okay, I'm 
good on Wednesdays, Tuesdays. I'm good at doing this when a certain pat this certain pattern works for me the best. Right. And then after time, you're like, you looked at the stats and you're like, okay, this is clearly working. Now I'm confident, or did it just confidence? as you kept on using the patterns or kept on using obviously your style of trading? So those two things definitely, okay. but you know, like this is from the technical part, mm -hmm. right? But um, I guess what actually boosted me, you know, gave me more confidence was actually in the mental uh, part where you, uh, where you just tell yourself, talk to yourself, you know, and say, okay, go ahead, mm -hmm. do that jump. I uh, actually had, um, two years ago, I met um, a great guy, a business guy, like a businessman, mm -hmm. and I did some great things with restaurants and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he all also uh, gave me a great push, just to, you know, sort of coaching bit, but mm -hmm. not in a, a specific matter of trading. Mm -hmm. So um, if I can recommend Maybe well, I'll give one tip in regarding to that. Obviously, the technical part, go and see the stats. Yep. But maybe try to find a, a coach, or not necessarily from trading, but mm -hmm. just someone that, in case you have the same problem that I had, mm -hmm. just someone that's pushing you. You know, like in a, a football, right? Soccer mm -hmm. or um, <laughs> a basketball. Football, football. <laughs> Let's stay with uh, yeah. football in the British way. Yeah. So, um, you know, you got your coach, then mm -hmm. you got your mental coaches, mm -hmm. and then you have, um, you see the, um, every time you watch the game mm -hmm. and analyzing it, right? And um, all, all of those things are like a performance uh, coach. Performance coach. Yeah. So those guys, if you're taking the right one, can actually boost you even much more than your technical uh, stats, for example. And where, where would you find somebody like that? Obviously, I think a lot of people. Where, yeah, where, where would you find somebody like that, or is it just coincidence that it happens? Actually, in this, in my case, it was truly coincident. Mm -hmm. it, it was a student of mine. Okay. So yeah, mm -hmm. so he came to uh, learn, mm -hmm. and from that, he gave me one angle. I gave him the others. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Um, other than that, I guess you know, just uh, look online, mm -hmm. Facebook groups, stuff like that. Um, maybe trying to specifically go to athletes because mm -hmm. we are like traders or super close to athletes mm -hmm. in regarding to the mentality that we need to have you know every day uh, coming to the market and trading mm -hmm. and if you had a loss and then let's say a basketball um, a team just lost the game right yep. um, or got out of the playoff or whatever and now they need to go back and play again. So the mentality there is very similar to us. Yeah. Like you said, like that loss is no longer, it's gone yeah. out of their minds. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. keep, that's interesting. Imagine uh, Messi coming to play the game after he <coughs> lost, I don't know, like four times. And yeah. now we need to perform and, you know, create miracles. So mm -hmm. if he's still thinking of those uh, games that he lost, Sorry, then uh, obviously you won't perform as uh, good as you should, mm -hmm. you know. Was there any time that you actually felt like this isn't working, this is, I should go back to, to, my, to my day job? And if so, like how did you, what did you go through and how did you get over that? Because... Uh, yeah. First of all, many times. Yeah. <laughs> many, many, little, many times. Um, for the first, at least, yeah, two years at least. Wow. Yeah, many times coming back and forth. That that's the you know exactly what we just uh, said about the the losing part. Because mm -hmm. you have a, I don't know a week that you're losing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is it really for me? Yeah. Am I really good? Yeah. Can I really perform and do that? Uh, all of those questions that run in through there. And um, yeah, but you gotta then from the other side. First of all, you really like what you're doing, and you mm -hmm. gotta love what you're doing. You gotta love trading in order to really make money. Mm -hmm. And um, and so this is what uh, you know kept you going. Mm -hmm. And the other parts are just um, you know remind yourself, okay, this is the week. What happened before that, right? You proved yourself that you can do that mm -hmm. last week or two weeks ago, a month ago. Mm -hmm. So nothing changed. Just your mentality change. You gotta take a deep breath. You know, maybe take some time off. That's also good. 
two days, three days, keep watching the market, but don't trade. And then uh, build yourself again the confidence, uh, look at the trades that made uh, you money mm -hmm. before, try to find those trades and stuff like that. So would you have like a particular like mental stop if let's say you've lost which in a week if you've lost that many times i think most people just be like that's it you know but do you have like a specific mental loss that if you've lost this many times you're going to take that step back and then rethink about everything and go through all your trades or and um, yeah. yeah i mean first of all decide even before start trading decide uh, you need to decide how much money are you willing to lose in total Okay, so you got a $10,000 account. Let's say you set up 50% out of it, I'm willing to lose. When you do that, and, uh, and your environment, your surrounding also aware of that, mm -hmm. and wife or whatever, then you much stronger, because I know I've got $5,000. I'm okay if I lost 1,000, mm -hmm. even 2,000, even 3,000. I got 5,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, mentally I'm stronger. That's the first step. The second one, is um, you know building a rule set of rules that you can actually uh, work through them according to them when you have it for example if you have uh, three days uh, this is one of my uh, rules three uh, losing uh, straight trades mm -hmm. I'm taking a step back right so um, it could be either trades it could be RPDs you know mm -hmm. risk per day yep. so I lost let's say uh, three RPDs, three mm -hmm. risks per day, so I'm done mm -hmm. for the week. Nice. And then you take the step back, you would go Analyzing do your gardening and yeah. stuff like that to get you back into yeah. that kind of... It's super important to play with the, with the board, the technical part with the stats, mm -hmm. and the other one, yeah, with the guard, you know, whatever you, you do that makes you, you know, feel better, mm -hmm. um, you know, give you more fresh air mm -hmm. to, to come back and uh, play the game. Mm -hmm. Let's say for somebody now who hasn't got that much money and they still want to do it, you'd say prop firms and look at prop firms to... I mean, that's a no-brainer, man. Yeah. Seriously. When I started trading, obviously, there wasn't a case. No prop firm was uh, alive, I guess. And as soon as I understood that there are such things, it was late for me because I'm, I'm okay. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's no-brainer. You yeah. pay... Um, a monthly fee or, or, or a one-time fee, let's say, I don't know, $300, right? Mm -hmm. Even for a, as a monthly fee, right? Mm -hmm. 10 times, so t 10 uh, months that you, you give yourself mm -hmm. to try, that's $3,000. You get in an account that you can actually make grow. money with, yeah, you can grow it, right? Yeah. You get all the resources and all of that. I mean, seriously, that's a no-brainer, guys. I'm, I know I'm, I'm one, that coming from uh, right now from uh, funding uh, yeah. prof but uh, I mean it's, it's kinda, so simple it's kind of crazy when you think about at the end of the when, you, when you're putting all of that money yourself you're taking all of that loss you know mm -hmm. and that mentally could I wouldn't say ruin you because if you love trading you love trading and, and you're always going to be addicted to, to looking at the markets and always enjoying watching way. it in a good way in a good <laughs> in a good way of course but Having a prop firm, like you said, where you have as well teachers, people that are in the same kind of because trading's lonely, you know, sitting in your house, looking at the charts, you've got your music on, you're focused, you don't see anyone, right? You know, and yeah. so that's a big thing. Did you was that the kind of same thing for you? Did you find it quite lonely uh, as being a full time wow. trader? Wow. That is a time of super loneliness. I mean, that. You sit at home, your friends at work, um, or just with their friends, or the family or whatever, yeah. um, wife at work, coming back, I'm trading, so I don't have time to spend with her. At the morning, at, at least again, here in Israel, at the morning, everyone at work, yeah. and basically you all alone. I had a great time, mm -hmm. amazing time, where I just woke up and played. Uh, PlayStation <laughs> and just you know any particular good games what games do you just play? either FIFA or uh, uh, Pro Evolution FIFA. depends on the on the time FIFA and a little bit of uh, Tekken as well Tekken is a good game I'll yeah. give you that one <laughs> so so I mean that's a great time to have yeah but as you know as it goes along it, it's kind of boring 
Yeah. So um, you don't have anyone to talk to, um, guidance that you like to, like feedbacks that mm -hmm. you want to get on your trades, because uh, though um, there was times like at the beginning that I said I did my trade right. It yeah. was good trade or bad trade, like a profitable or or um, a failed, but I didn't know what you know. I didn't know how to analyze it. I mm -hmm. didn't know if it's if I took the right trade or it's it was the lucky one, right? Yeah. So um, that's kind of hard when you don't have this environment that support you and you can actually. I can kind of see that as well. I remember I I had a trade a couple of a couple of weeks ago and I. I told you that you know it was a good I got it I had all these confluences in this one area I got in like my plan said and I told you I got out way too early because right. of certain price action it went straight up to my original take profit where I wanted to yeah and for me I couldn't see why I did it or, or I, I knew why I did it but I couldn't see the the price action while I was in there and why it could have still gone up to the take profit and that's when I asked you and you kind yeah. of broke it down for me a little bit better um, and it's kind of one of my biggest mistakes is always taking from my my higher higher time frames going into the little time frames and I'm always saying I always do it and make mistakes and you kind of touched on that you said you always make that mistake and that's what you did again so right. if somebody's always making these kind of mistakes how can they get how can they get over that you know just yeah i mean first of all you know if you have um, someone that can uh, you know look over the shoulder okay. and uh, <laughs> and just tell you what you're doing wrong you know sometimes when you look from um, outside yeah and it's easier to see the mistake mm -hmm. and then yeah it, it's, um, you become aware of that and it's easier to fix um, other than that, or again, uh, it just when you're in that trade, okay, mm -hmm. when you're in that trade already, just uh, take a step back and ask yourself those questions. Why do I want to sell you? Like literally, ask yourself loud, why do I want to sell you? Now, if you don't have a real answer for that, and you understand the times when you have a real mm -hmm. answer and when you are bluffing yourself, right? Yeah. So if you don't have a real answer for that, just pick yourself up and go. Leave the computer. Because mm -hmm. the first thing you will do is try to... Manage uh, or micromanage a trade. Yeah. Leave yeah. it. Leave it. Just um, ask us when you want to take profit, give yourself rules. If the stock will do or the whatever, uh, the Bitcoin will go to this price, then I'll sell. Why? Mm -hmm. Because one, two, three, four, five. Did it go to that place? No. So why are you trying to sell? Yeah. Right? Makes sense? Makes sense. I'm going over it in my head and I'm, I'm exactly the exact things and when I look back, there was no really real reason to, to sell, you know, yeah. it was higher highs, higher lows and it was just literally just a little bit of a retracement and it's fine. It's you you called me a you called me a name as well. I, I admit it was uh, it was correct. It was yeah. <laughs> um, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, cool. Any kind of more tips that you would uh, just like last kind of notes for somebody that is, is about to take on that journey? I mean, if if you uh, just started, mm -hmm. you didn't trade yet, and you just started first learn you know yeah. there are a lot of youtube channels um, obviously from our place as well like uh, ttp and yeah. the fibers you can uh, get a lot of information include their yeah, content. tons of resources yeah then sit and build their business plan how much you're spending what's the amount of money that you can bring to the table uh, how long it will take you to reach that goal at least uh, uh, how much time you have um uh, free time hours and stuff like that what uh, what is catching your eyes? I mean, do you want to trade stocks, forex? Mm -hmm. You will play with it as soon as uh, you will start trading. Mm -hmm. But try to go to uh, with your hunch. You mm -hmm. know, give it a little bit uh, of that, and then um, understand mentally. You can read stuff uh, like um, uh, mindset and uh, you know stuff that are working uh, on your mentally mm -hmm. trading psychology, but also in general like performance uh, mm -hmm. point. And from that point, start. Yeah. And somebody that is a little bit more advanced, three, four years, and they're still like on the on the, the fence. 
So this, jump into this it. is a bit a bit more tricky mm -hmm. because you need to see the stats mm -hmm. on one hand. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't know your stats, this, this is the first thing that you need to do. Just upload those uh, uh, trades to a platform that analyzes uh, everything mm -hmm. and go through those stats. That's yep. the first thing you need to do. And because uh, it will help you understand how to become a better trader, like an executioner, uh, technical-wise, uh, and it will also um, affect your uh, psychology mm -hmm. in that matter, but also keep learning things about psychology. It, it's always helped. How many how many trades is a is a good batch of data? Because some people would say a hundred trades is is a good way of looking at your data and then getting the stats. I guess somebody who's been trading for a while they they would have a lot. But how much is a good kind of indication? A good amount of trades for an indication of. I mean, at first it depends if you're day trading or swing trading. Mm -hmm. um, for swing trading, I guess you can work with 40, 50 trades. Mm -hmm. Day trading, I will go with uh, between 150 to 200, um, those numbers, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, it was great. Guys, make sure uh, you subscribe to the podcast where I'll be sitting with Mickey and picking his brain on everything to do with trading. I've got so many questions. I'm going to be a little bit selfish because these are all the things that I want to know. Um, but stay tuned for, for more content in the future, guys. So thank you very much for being Bye, with us today. Care.